Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Introduction to Robust Design. In this video, we will explain the Taguchi's definition of quality and what is robust design. We will also explain Taguchi's philosophy of robust design and the quality loss function as defined by Dr. Taguchi. We will understand the concept of parameter diagram and the various type of factors. The signal to noise or SN ratios as defined by Dr. Taguchi and a simple example of SN ratio calculation. So what is robust design in simple words? Robust design is immunizing the design to variation in noise factors. A classic example of robust design in nature is the cockroach. Cockroaches have lived on the earth for about 250 million years. There are over 3500 species found throughout the world. They live in a variety of places from tropical rainforest to deserts. So what is robustness? Robustness is defined as a condition in which the product or process will be minimally affected by sources of variation. A product can be robust against variation in raw materials, against variation in manufacturing conditions, against variation in manufacturing personnel, against variation in end-use environment, against variation in end-users, and against wear out or deterioration or degradation of materials. Dr. Genichi Taguchi defined quality as loss to the society after the product is shipped. This is actually negative definition of quality. In traditional model, the loss is zero within tolerance and every part within tolerance is considered as equally good and every part that is out of tolerance is considered as bad or defective. However, Dr. Genichi Taguchi suggested a different philosophy. He suggested that all parts within tolerance are not equally good and the quality loss to the society increases proportional to the square of the distance from the target. This is the loss shown in red color in the following figure. As the loss is proportional to the square of the distance from the target, for nominal is the best type of quality characteristic, we can write loss L is proportional to Y minus M bracket square and therefore loss can be equated to K into Y minus M bracket square where K is the constant of proportionality. Observe that the loss function is actually parabolic. Let us see a simple example of quality loss function. Loss is equal to K into Y minus M bracket square where T is the target which is the most desirable and Y is the actual value and K is the constant. Example is like this. A company makes a shaft with specification of 25 plus minus 0.1 millimeters. Cost of scrapping is rupees 100. A shaft will get scrapped if size is below lower limit. So loss is equal to K into 24.9 minus 25 bracket square or we can calculate K as 10,000. Therefore, the loss function L will be 10,000 into Y minus 25 bracket square. With this, we can estimate the loss for interim values. The previous equation loss is equal to K into Y minus M bracket square was valid for a single component. When we are manufacturing multiple parts, it can be shown that the average loss L is equal to K into bracket sigma square plus Y bar minus M bracket square where M is the target and Y bar is the average of many parts which are produced. So Y bar minus M represents the difference 
between the average and the target and sigma square represents the variation in the parts loss function for smaller the better quality characteristic is given by loss l is equal to ky square similarly for larger the better quality characteristic loss function l is equal to k into 1 upon y square let us visualize average loss in various situations when mean is on target and the variation is low the loss is also low seen in the green color when mean is on target but variation increases the loss also increases as seen by the red color when the mean is off target and variation is low still the loss will be somewhat higher and finally when the mean is off target and variation is also high the loss will be very high dr taguchi suggested a three step approach for robust design step 1 system design when new concepts ideas methods are generated to provide new and better products then parameter design design optimum settings of control factors to assure uniform and robust products and finally tolerance design when quality is improved by tightening tolerances at minimum cost in robust design of products often parameter diagram is used in parameter diagram we identify the responses y1 y2 etc up to yn then we identify the control factors x1 x2 up to xn which are under the control of designers then we identify the noise factors z1 z2 up to zn which are not under the control of designers or cannot be economically controlled by the designer and the signal factors which are actually the user interaction with the system control factors are design parameters of a system that affect system performance and can be economically and realistically controlled by the designer examples of control factors include material such as chemical makeup hardness mechanical parameters such as pressure flow rate temperature setting etc dimensional such as length width roundness coating thickness etc surface finish such as smoothness the noise factors are variables or parameters which affect system performance but are uncontrollable or not economical to control by the designer examples include material variation environment such as temperature humidity external vibrations noise factors could be further classified as outer noise which could be because of environmental factors such as ambient temperature humidity pressure input voltage fluctuations people different batches of material etc there could be inner noise because of deterioration of elements or materials in the product component wear corrosion chemical degradation calibration shift drift etc and there could be between product noise or product noise which could be because of piece to piece variation between products materials and part tolerances a signal factor is a factor with a range of settings that is controlled by the user during use for example the amount of deceleration is a measure of brake performance the signal factor is the degree of depression on the brake pedal as the driver pushes down on the brake pedal deceleration increases the degree of pedal depression has a significant effect on the deceleration and time to stop the vehicle because no optimal setting for the pedal depression exists it is not logical to treat this as a control factor instead engineers would like to design a brake system that produces the most efficient and the least variable amount of deceleration 
throughout the range of brake pedal depression. Let us understand the difference between conventional and robust design in terms of design of experiment strategy. In the conventional experimental design, we only have one objective, optimize the mean. However, in robust design of experiments, DOE, our objectives are to optimize mean and also to minimize variation. For achieving both the objectives in design of experiments, Taguchi introduced a figure of merit called signal to noise ratios. In conventional DOE, we estimate the effect on the mean. In the robust design of experiment, we are interested in mean and variation and Taguchi introduced a figure of merit called signal to noise ratio. Our objective is to maximize this SN ratio always for robust design. Signal to noise ratios of lower is better, nominal is best and higher is better are shown in this particular slide. Where N is the number of responses in the factor level combination, S is standard deviation of the given factor level combination. These are used in the experimental design in various runs. Let us see an example of calculation of SN ratios in a design of experiment. A designer wants to maximize fatigue strength of a shaft by optimizing three parameters, radius, roughness and case depth. Data of three replicates of 2 to the power 3 design is shown here. Calculate SN ratios. The best treatment is the one with the highest SN ratio. The first three columns shows the design of experiment runs with radius, roughness and case settings. Then Y1, Y2, Y3 columns show the data of the three replicates, response data of the three replicates. The next two columns show mean and standard deviation of each of the treatment rows. And then finally, the last column shows the SN ratios for higher is better, which is given by minus 10 log of 1 upon N summation of 1 to N 1 upon Y I square. And note that the highest SN ratio value is 19.208, which is for the row combination, treatment combination 8, 8 and 2. And that is the most robust combination. Here are some common examples of robust design. Crowning of gears, camshafts, pulleys, cam followers to minimize effect of misalignments in parts is regularly done. And we can say that this is kind of robust design. Tubeless tires can be considered as more robust compared to tires with tubes. The chances of tubeless tire getting punctured out of the blue are very low as there is no tube inside. In case of puncture, the vehicle can still be driven for some time so that the puncture can be repaired. Redundancy and derating can be considered as similar to the idea in robust design. Let us do a recap of the video. According to Taguchi, quality is lost to the society after the product is shipped. This is actually a negative definition of quality. Robust design is immunizing the design to variations in noise factors. We have briefly explained Taguchi's philosophy of robust design. We have explained the quality loss functions for nominal is the best, larger is better and smaller the better type of quality characteristics. We have seen an overview of the parameter diagram and in specific control factors, noise factors and signal factors. We have discussed signal to noise ratios or SN ratios which can be used in Taguchi design of experiments to identify robust treatment combination. The one, the treatment that has got the highest SN ratio is the most robust treatment combination. A simple design of experiment example of SN ratio calculation and robust design was also discussed. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel 
if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering, Six Sigma and quality engineering.